Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to Code Wars Code Katas episode 32, part two. Well, we're gonna break things down one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. We're gonna break things down one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. Code Wars Code Katas, Code Wars Code Katas, Code Wars Code Katas, yeah. Welcome to the show. If you're new to the show, let's, let's fix that. There we go. <laughs> uh, you can visit github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas. You can see all of the katas I have solved in past episodes. All of the katas I solved today and the ones that I solved this morning will be pushed up here as well. Let's say hello to all the wonderful people in the chat. Hello, Design Course Gary. Welcome to the stream. Yes, it's Gary. <laughs> cool. Uh, hello, Elia. Welcome. Uh, hello, Daniel Garden. Welcome. Hello, Christian. Hello, Greg. Greg says, hey, everyone. What code are we breaking tonight? We're breaking all the code. We, we always do. We always break the codes. But I'm glad you're all here to watch me do it. Uh, hello, Andrew Lane. Oh, yeah. So you have to be a, a, a Alka subscriber on Twitch to get the Alka face. I'll, I'll show you. There we go. <laughs> Though, you can do a bang Alka on Twitch chat. And, oh, is it broken? Oh no. Ah, oh, I don't know. I think I broke my chat client. I was trying to do some profanity filters and I broke a lot more stuff. <laughs> uh, hello, Bob, welcome. Hello, Muhammad. Hello, Andrew Lane. Uh, Andrew Lane's on YouTube and on Twitch. <laughs> um, Bob says, I need a crash course on async and promises. I'm gonna throw this into the questions category. Uh, and if we have some time and some interest, we can uh, we can try and do something about it. Uh, hello, FZs, welcome. Um, Elia says all the popular YouTube <laughs> YouTubers watch CJ to pump up their skills. I'm sure Gary doesn't need to pump up his skills. And then we see I am 12. What is this? I don't know. Is Gary's son on this or Gary's daughter? <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting Gary to be here. Welcome. Uh, where's Siraj? <laughs> I, th I feel like th all these other YouTubers are in a whole different category. I have 15,000 subs. These people have 500,000, a million. I don't know. Hello, Merchan. Welcome. Uh, ukulele. Is I play guitar, too. Yeah. Uh, Extreme Fool says, can you say hello to my cat? Hello, Extreme Fool's cat. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened. My profanity filter is filtering out com, like .com. Okay, yeah. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Hello, Chris, who says, uh, nice to see you in the stream. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thanks for the follow, Sergith. I appreciate it. And hello, Alfred. So, if you tuned in this morning, uh, you would have seen that I uh, started on some katas. So we solved an 8Q, a 7Q, and then we got started on a 6Q, which is this uh, tic-tac-toe uh, table generator. And I had to go before we could finish it. Um, so most likely this is where I'll start and then we might actually take a step back and solve some easier ones and then gradually build up again just for anybody that didn't get to watch this morning so we'll start with some easier easier katas um, so this particular one you are given an array um, like a single dimension array of all the different parts of the tic-tac-toe board and you're given a width which tells you um, how wide each row is and then given that information, you need to generate an actual tic-tac-toe board. So we're almost there. I can show the code running, what we have so far. It seems like it works. I think we're running into an issue where we have some extra characters or like an extra new line character on the end. Um, so we'll have to fix that. Um, and so that's the plan. And if anyone has any suggestions, suggestions for katas for me to solve, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, oh, Merchan is saying, will we see you do a 4Q today, perhaps? Maybe, if anyone has any suggestions, um, because I did solve three katas this morning, or like two and a half. So we could jump into the much harder ones, and this might be a whole episode about one for, uh, one, one for you kata. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Hello, Mattia, welcome. Okay, so let's, let's try to see what's going wrong with this particular thing. Um, so... Um, and you know what, I'm actually, I'm just gonna debug it so we can hopefully inspect the new lines on the end. So I'm using Quaka.js to run the code inside of the editor and um, 
it's not very helpful. <laughs> so um, I could potentially log this. Yeah, so it, see, it's not logging the new lines, which is why I ran it with Node. Um, but let's run it with the debugger. So I'm going to set a breakpoint. Actually, I'll, I'll disable Quokka. And we'll start it up. Um, debug. Mm, that should work. Okay, so it stopped on this line of code. We're going to step in, which will invoke the display board function. So we are given a board with this array, 0x space space x space x0 space, and the width right now is 3. So let's go in. And honestly, I really just want to see what this thing is returning. So I'm going to play it. We're going to get the result. And it's rendered it for us, but let's take a look at the result here in the debugging tools. So we have um, 0x maybe we have an extra space right here then we have the line um we definitely have a, an extra new line on the end so we need to fix that um because the resulting code should not have a new line on the end so let's fix that let's just stop this um and that essentially is happening right here uh, because the very last line is not a line of repeating dashes it's just a line of uh, x's and o's um and so we could add like a nested ternary right here that says uh, if we're at the last line, um, don't add a new line. Hmm. We could also just remove the last character from the string. Let's 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 do that. Let's if we um, let's say um, result equals result dot slice. I think you can do slice with a negative one. Let's just try that like in a, a Chrome console really quick. Uh, slice with a negative one. That's wrong. So I think you can do substring with a negative one. You can do substr with a negative one. Oh, no, no, no. Zero negative one. Substring with zero negative one. Slice. <laughs> Something is going to work. There we go. So <laughs> if we do a slice, we tell it to start at zero and then go to negative one from the end. That will remove the last character from the string. Okay, so if we do zero comma negative one, um, and then let's debug it again. Go. Um, press play. We're here. We can look at the result. There is no new line on the end, and um, it does seem to have the right amount of spacing. So let's compare it with the actual expected result um, right here. Well, actually, we could do the same thing with the, um, with the width 2 board. So we're given this. Um, yeah, I'm going to start up Quokka. And if we do double equals, we get true. Okay, so it's at least working for the case of uh, this array and length two, so that's good. And then, um, this one is of length three. Yeah, so let's try this one. And we can say, are they equal to each other? And this also gives us true. Okay, is this all we needed? Let's, pl <laughs> let's plug this into Code Wars and uh, see if it works. Sample tests. Five passing sample tests. Attempt. Wow. Okay. So we were we were literally we literally just had an extra new line on the end. That's good to know. Okay. Um cool. I think from here I'm actually going to I'm gonna take a step back. We're gonna go do some easier katas. Um, are we? I don't know. We'll see if anyone has any suggestions for a 4Q kata, but let's stop that. Um Yeah, we did it. I realize some of you that weren't watching this morning, you didn't get to be a part of it, but we did do it. So I'm going to submit final there. Cool. Uh, thanks, Seobi. Yeah, I cut my hair. <laughs> it was getting way too long, and I, um, um, I was, I've, I've been wearing my hat lately. A lot of people ask questions about my hat, which is weird. Yeah, not much hair left, except for on top. <laughs> uh, put the slash in before the dashes. So um, let's see. Oh, because then it would have come, I see. But but then there would be a new line here. I don't know. I kind of want to get away from this kata. Let's find another one to solve. 
uh, design course. <laughs> Rate CJ's chat manager on on a from design from one to ten. So this little thing that I don't know if you're still watching, but this thing that I built uh, integrates Twitch chat and YouTube chat, um, and I've been iterating on it. And I know it's not the best design, but yeah. And hello, Annaboth. Welcome to the stream. Um, Azerbaijan did a markdown H1. Yeah. So this thing will also render some HTML. A one Q when it has to be a dedicated episode. I guess, I mean, it could be today. There's not that many people watching. The thing I worry about whenever I'm uh, trying some of these harder katas is um, just the fact that it's going to take me hours to solve. And I don't really know if anybody wants to sit through, sit through that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Meritron is saying, I opened an issue on the Code Cottage repo with some four cues that I've solved in the past. Let's take a look. Let's see how difficult they are. And maybe, maybe this is an episode where um, we do a four queue. Four queue suggestions. Uh, nesting structure comparison. Complete the function or method to return true when its argument is an array that has the same nesting structure as the first array. Okay, so for example, we're given this, and we have to do dot same structure as, and we're given another array. Very interesting. So it's, it's an array, but it potentially has different values inside of it. Interesting. I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I, there's probably a way I could solve that. I don't think that would take me hours, maybe one hour. Let's see. Uh, simplifying multilinear polynomial, polynomials. <laughs> this seems really interesting. Um, yeah, because basically you're you're doing algebra, but with JavaScript, that would be crazy. Okay, uh, when we attended middle school, we were asked to simplify mathematical expressions like 3x minus yx plus 2xy minus x. And that was easy peasy, 2x plus xy. But tell your PC and we'll see. So write a function called simplify that takes a string input representing a multilinear non-constant polynomial and integers coefficients, <laughs> like 3x minus zx plus 2xy minus x, uh, and returns another string as output where the same expression has been simplified in the following way. Um, okay. That... This also seems very interesting. I mean, it probably would take me a while to solve, but it would be really cool to basically build a algebra engine. Okay, let's look at this one, explosive sum. How many ways can you make the sum of a number? Um, so in number theory and combinatorics, a partition of a positive integer n, also called an integer partition, is a way of writing in as a sum of positive integers. Mm -hmm. Two sums that differ only in the order of their uh, summons are considered the same partition. If order matters, the sum becomes a composition. For example, four can be partitioned in five distinct ways. Yeah. Okay. I I don't really like combinatorics type thing, type things. They're hard. It's hard to come up with all the possible combinations and also like remove duplicates. Uh, so we'll see. And then let's take a look at this one. Uh, given two numbers left and right, um, return the sum of all one occurrences in binary representations of numbers between left and right. Are we es essentially implementing uh, like bit shifting? Let's see given two numbers left and right. So one is less than or equal to left, is less than or equal to right, is less than or equal to a very big number. Um, count ones four, seven should return eight because, so you're given two numbers? And warning, this segment may contain a billion elements. To pass this kata, your solution cannot iterate through all numbers in this segment. Cool, so I'm gonna count this one out I'm going to count this one out. These two are definite possibilities. Uh, structure comparison and multilinear poly polynomials. Um, they're going to be hard. And you're going to watch me sweat. But let's, uh, I, think, I think we'll do it. Sometimes you got to run before you walk. <laughs> uh, today we might actually solve a very difficult kata. Uh, hello, Alicia. Welcome to the stream. Uh, you were watching the stream from this morning. So, um... All you missed was we figured out, I don't, know, I don't know if you saw it to the end, but the third one that we solved was the tic-tac-toe-like table generator, and the fix was just to remove the trailing new line. But ultimately, we, we did solve it. Oh, is ATD sub Dauka? That's great. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the compliment. Um, Andrew Lane has a Code Wars.
Someone has suggested this one before, functional SQL. So in this kata, we're going to mimic the SQL syntax with JavaScript. To do this, you must implement the query function. This function returns an object with the, the next methods. Um, you know what? I mean, this is kind of like implementing connects from scratch. How, how are the tests on this one? Okay, there are a ton of tests. This might also be very fun. I mean, I don't know if we could finish the whole thing, but like implementing the select method on an array. I kind of like it. I kind of, I kind of like it. Um, Annabelle says, I would actually love to see you solving a 1Q or a 2Q. The problem is the time. I have to wake up early to work. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. What do we got here? Oh, it's just uh, weird characters. Cool. <laughs> Uh, Joshua says the mathematician, mathematician in me likes to simplify one. Yeah. I mean, I have a minor in mathematics. I just haven't used my math brain in a while. Hello, Gio. Welcome to the stream. Um, dudes, dudes, dudes <laughs> is saying, hi, CJ. I'm a beginner building my portfolio. I know no JS view and a little bit of react. I love JS and the fact that it allows me to be a one man band and to understand a full code base. So for now, I prefer to go deeper into JavaScript rather than learning another language. Do you think it's a good strategy to niche down and represent myself as a JavaScript developer on my portfolio? Um, I think you asked the same question on discord. I just haven't had a chance to reply. So I will reply. Um, I, I don't think so. I think if you're just getting started and um, JavaScript is kind of what you know, I think that's totally fine. Um, at the same time, a lot of companies, some companies don't necessarily hire just for a JavaScript developer or, or like a, a back end JavaScript developer. A lot of times they hire developers for their, their ability to learn and, and be a developer. Um, so if you want to market yourself as a JavaScript developer and you want to search for jobs and find jobs that are specifically for JavaScript developers, then I say totally. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of why you're asking your, this question because you see it as limiting. Um, I don't think so. I think there, there are, and it, it also depends on the market. Here's what I do, first step go to a job posting board and see what kind of jobs are out there. Because if you see full stack JavaScript jobs, then it, you're, it'll be easy. You, you know that you're going to be able to find a job. But if you don't, then you may have to differentiate your skills. I think that's my advice. Um, yeah. Check your job market and, and plan, according, uh, plan accordingly. But at the same time, I'm a full stack JavaScript developer. Um, I have done a lot of stuff in the past. And um, when my work needs me to do other things, I'll do th those things as well. But uh, when I was applying for jobs, I was really looking for a full stack JavaScript position. So it's not a bad thing. Uh, I didn't see your hidden comment. Should I scroll down? Secret comment that CJ won't know about. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Hexception says, hey, glad you're live. Had a pretty bad day. Needed a distraction from my life. Welcome, Hexception. I'm glad I can be your distraction. Yes, new haircut. The one Q looks spicy. Um, plus one for the, the sequel kata. And hello, John. Uh, you know what? Let's do it. You know? Let's, like, why not? Let's do it. We're going to do a one Q today. All right. Strap in. Buckle up. Um, okay. Here we go. I should just change the, the, <laughs> the name of this video to implementing a SQL query language. Um, one thing that I want to do, though, is I, wa I want to bring these tests down and actually be able to run the real tests um, locally. So I wonder, uh, Merchan, do you know what, um, what testing library they use? Because like it has test.it, test.assert similar. Um, let's just search the interwebs for test.assert similar. Uh, Code Wars JavaScript test framework. Can I install it? It's homegrown. Okay. Um, I could probably just do a find and replace and like use Mocha Chai probably. I think that's what we'll do though. This is gonna be fun. There's there's not that many. There are a lot of people here this morning. There's not that many people here now. It's it's great. We're gonna we're just gonna do it. We're gonna implement SQL. <laughs> Uh, algebra query either works for me. I'm in database this semester, so that would be interesting, but I think I'd rather see the algebra queue. Yeah. Um, 
I'm gonna do a sequel though. It sounds fun. I'm ready. Hello, Aaron. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> um, Cheddar is saying, I like the one cue because it's actually like a problem that you'd solve in the real world. Not a fan of the messed up questions with weird instructions. I agree. And hello, Cheddar. Hope you're doing well this evening. Um, so it is homegrown. Is it open source though? Can I click it? What happens if I click it? Um, Code Wars Testing Framework. Code Wars has implemented a custom test framework for each language that it supports. This framework is designed to work similar to other popular frameworks. Uh, JS slash copy coffee for script test. Okay, I think I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll pull it down locally. We'll inspect what the tests actually look like and see how easy it would be to convert to something like Mocha Chai or Jest. So let's do it. Um, so let's create a new file, functional sql.js. Um, we're going to have a constructor function called query. <laughs> and uh, we'll create a new file called functional sql.test. <clears throat> I'm going to throw these in here and let's take a look. So. Um, this thing will need to import query from this file. So let's say const query equals require um, functional SQL. So that should fix that error. Um, I'm just going to run my linter on this to change all the uh, double quotes to single quotes. Um, test.describe, test.it, test.assert similar. Assert similar. Let's see what all what all the occurrences of assert. Assert similar. Assert similar. Assert similar. Because uh, really, this is just going to be um, probably a deep equals with something like jest or a chai. Everything is assert similar. Uh, oh no, there's a test dot expect. And then what is check error? Oh, they create their own check error function. Okay. <laughs> One Q, F it. I don't need a job anyway. You can always go to bed, Anaboth. You don't have to stick around. Plus one to cheddar, these are common problems, cool. Uh, thanks for the YouTube sub, <laughs> uh, damage23. Uh, uh, CJ, I don't think we got a YouTube alert, you know? That's unfortunate. Um, maybe YouTube doesn't like that I'm dual streaming to Twitch. <laughs> I, I did post on Twitter and on Discord, so it's okay. I'm actually, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Uh, no idea about the testing library, okay. Um, I, I don't, I mean, did, is, in any, is anyone else watching? Did you get a YouTube alert? Maybe it's not working, that's okay though, I mean, it's better when there are less people because I can actually answer all of the chats and acknowledge all of the chats. Uh, okay. Uh, what's the link for this kata? Yeah, I'll share it out. Here it is. There you go. Uh, thanks for the follow, Resvents. Res Welcome. We've been live for 30 minutes. All right, and uh, this is a very special episode because we're going to attempt to do a 1Q. Uh, the first thing we need to do is just get these tests running locally. Um, so, okay, we do see assert equals. How many occurrences of that? Okay. Um, we could probably use, like, node has a built-in assert. Yeah, the only thing, you know what I can do? Here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm going to uh, first do an npm init. And then we'll install Chai and Mocha. Um, yeah, so npmi d uh, Mocha and Chai. And then I'll write a super basic little object called capital T test that implements like a cert, a cert similar, but un, like when the, with the parameters that are passed in, it just uses the uh, 
uh, chai expectation library. So um, we'll bring in um, expect from chai. And um, basically anywhere we have test.describe, that can just be describe. And there's only one, so that's fine. Um, and then anywhere we have test.it should just be it. There we go. Uh, and now we're going to make a nice little object called capital T test. And that is an object that has an assert similar function on it that takes in, um, I guess it takes in two arguments. I was thinking like, do we need to spread them? Okay, there's a there's a comment. Um, found this on Code Wars. Starting from okay, Mocha is used instead of our custom test framework. Code Wars assertion methods are still available for now. The new test using using Chai is recommended. Okay, thanks for the follow, Ghost Wake. Thanks for the the follow, uh, Lonser. 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 Uh, yes, one Q is the hardest. Uh, we're about to implement basically a SQL query language, so it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be cool, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I think it takes in, oh, no, 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 assert similar. So that has, okay, it takes in three parameters. The first two parameters are the things that it's comparing, I believe. And then the last parameter, if there is a third parameter, is the error message that should be shown. I think that's right. Let's go with that. So um, we'll have, um, I don't know, I guess we can call it A and B. <laughs> there's probably a better name. And then there's error message. Um, so this is a function that will just then do uh, expect A to deep equal B. And then uh, we'll pass in the error message. Oh, I think that's right. Cool. Um, test.assert similar, test.assert similar. I think the only other one was uh, test.expect. Expect Expect false, an error should be thrown. And then there's assert equals. We need expect and assert equals. Hmm. I think expect is just uh, checking it to be true. So this is a function that takes in A and B. And um, we'll do um, expect A to, oh no, no, just, just takes in A to B true. And what was the other one? Assert equals. And what is that doing? Assert the message equals the message. Cool. So expect A to B B. Like that. All right. Uh, let's try running these tests. Um, NPX mocha. No test file found test. Um, I think it prefers to have like a test folder. And then we'll put the functional SQL test in there. And then uh, we'll need to update the, the import here. Cool. Uh, query is not a function. That's a good sign, I think. So type error, query is not a function. So this is importing query and trying to invoke it. And if we look at this, it doesn't export anything. So if we say module.exports, equals query, run the tests, um, expect to be is not a function. OK. <laughs> I need to look up the, um, um, the what do you call it, the, ch the chai documentation. But uh, type error query is not a function. Um, it is, though. And this is happening in the very first test, basic select tests. Um, 
We're trying to invoke query. Cannot read property selective undefined. That's the error we want to see. Okay, cool. So we got set up. I'm sure we'll come across other things. Uh, thanks for the follow to hell. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody saw a YouTube alert. That's unfortunate. Uh, just some Aussie did get a YouTube alert. That's good. It could be due to the frequency. Yeah, since I already went live this morning, they didn't send the notification when I, when I went live now. Uh, yeah, and one Q is the hardest. We're <laughs> we're going off the deep end. So if you go to Code Wars, um, eight Q is the easiest. And usually I stick in the eight to five Q range. Every now and then I'll do a four Q. But today we're doing a one Q. It's gonna be great. Hopefully, maybe I don't know. This could be this could be like this could be like a crash and burn. Uh, <laughs> Orlando is asking new VS Code theme. Um, so it's yes, I I'm trying it out. I don't know if I like it that much yet, but it is called One Dark Raincoat. Um, and you can find it <laughs> VS Code. You can find it um, here. Here it is. It looks like I got a super chat from Design Course. That's awesome. Let's read it. <laughs> um, super chat, heading out, keep it up. Thank you so much, Design Course. You have a wonderful evening. I'll see ya. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and thanks for the, the YouTube sub, uh, Romeo. Welcome. Okay. I think it's going to happen. We're going to do this. <laughs> We're going to make it work. YouTube. Yeah, 1Q is actually the hardest. Uh, Daniel did get the, 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 the alert. Super chat. That's crazy. Thank you so much, Design Course. Uh, one in the morning and then another now. Okay. Wait, is that two Super Chats? No. I think that's just two messages. Okay, there's one message from Streamlabs and one from the actual Super Chat. Uh, what keyboard am I using? Um, if Streamlabs bot is working, you can do a bang keyboard. Like that. And didn't it didn't do it. <laughs> uh, so, oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. So there, there's, there's the link uh, for the, uh, the, the keyboard. <clears throat> Hello, Dr. Fogg. Welcome. Uh, I should try Wallaby. You know, I should. Uh, does it, will it work? Because um, I know, um, like, Quokka has issue with requiring modules. So will, will uh, Wallaby work with requiring in Chai like this? Let's try it. Installed globally, um, updating the core, core and sex successfully installed. Okay. Um, run file. Can you do start on start? Please select the Wallaby configuration file. Um, automatic configuration. Project directory? Starting in a limited trial mode. If you'd like to try Wallaby without any limitations, please request an extended trial. Um, okay. Run file tests. Wallaby start. Okay. I'm not familiar enough with Wallaby, and I don't think I want to um, mess with it to try to get it working. But it's a good suggestion, because I've seen it before. I've seen it in action, and it looks awesome. But yeah. Um, Autoconfig is only for Jest. Copy from their site. Okay, let's let's try to get it going. Wallaby JS. Uh, docs. Configuration. Um...
Configure auto overriding automatic defaults, configuration file. Um, cool. And this is a wallaby.conf.js file. For Node.js tests, you need to set the env. OK, we'll look into that. So my tests are um, slash slash test.js. And then the files are anything that start with JavaScript. Um, let's see uh, if I have to do anything special for Node. Uh, env type Node. It's probably all I need. Node flags. Environment variables should be good there. Um, let's try it. Run file test did not work. Wallaby start. <laughs> what is the Wallaby app? A web app that provides strategic level features. OK. VS Code tutorial. First steps, selecting the Wallaby configuration file. Um, oh, select configuration file. OK, so Wallaby select configuration. That's the one we want. OK. Oh, it's working. It's working. Uh, at least we see, we see dots here. Uh, cannot find module. Um, Can't find module dot dot slash functional SQL. Um, that's weird because we're in the test directory. And uh, we go up one and we grab functional SQL. Uh, the file paths are wrong? What do I need it to be? Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, uh, I mean, is that in my conf? Oh, because there is no source. OK, cool. Uh, so it really should just be star slash JS. Um, and then this is just test slash star test JS. Okay. And then select configuration. Let's reselect it and then start. Oh, it's working now. It's working. Okay. Uh, expect to be is not a function. Cool. And it actually like shows us our, uh, our, our tests in line. Cannot read property selective undefined. Awesome. We did it. We did it. Uh, thanks for the suggestion. Um, was it John? Yeah, John. Thank you. Uh, command shift for the wallaby menu. Command shift. Uh, control shift? Doesn't matter. Cool. Uh, and thanks for the YouTube sub uh, design course. Um, I see the level up Tut's VS Code theme because it's purple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube takes 30% of Super Chat donos. Um, I I don't know. I don't know how much they take. They probably take a lot. <laughs> My favorite type of food. Um, I really like guacamole, so I really like avocados. I'll say that. That's my favorite food. <laughs> Thanks for the tips, John. That was great. So many colors makes coding look like a game. Yeah, we're, we're, this is it. The game is to make the test pass. Okay, so, um, let's, yeah, let's start with our very first test. Uh, so, I guess expect to be is not a thing. Expect to equal. Cool. So this very first test. So query is being invoked, and then it needs to return something that has a select property. Right? So the error we're getting right now is um, do not read property selective undefined. So the simple fix for this test is for our query function to actually just return an object that has a select property. Um, I'm going to do as little as possible to get at least that part going. So now when query is invoked, it returns an object. Um, that object has a select property on it, so at least we can get this far. And then it gets here, and it's like, oh, you don't have a from property. So um, this says cannot read property from of undefined. So 
we could keep doing this all day long, but really, um, we kind of need query to um, create an instance, right? Because the instance could then return itself so that it has um, access to all the functions. And when a function gets passed in a value, that can get stored in some internal property. Um, so yeah, we need some sort of class that we're going to return. Um, so yeah, let's create a class. Let's call it, um, I mean, let's call it capital query. So I don't see why not. Um, as far as I can tell, they don't really pass any parameter for it. Um, so it doesn't really need a constructor, but it will have a um, select function. And that really just needs to return this. So it returns the instance so that um, you can chain methods off of it. Um, and then it also needs that, um, from method. So the from method takes in, um, I don't know, let's call it data. And um, again, it's chain, so we say uh, return this. But when we call execute, we're going to need access to numbers. So the from should set an instance property. So like this dot data equals data. Um, and then now it should be complaint. Well, what we should do is when query is executed, we need to return a new instance of query. So a new capital Q query. So ultimately that's going to return an object that has properties or not an, an instance that has properties select and from. Um, and then we can start um, adding the things that we need. The kata description tells us what we need. Um, I kind of like just making the test pass. <laughs> should, I, should I just keep going? <laughs> Uh, does my live chat manage your cache profile pictures? It does. So the, the first time that it, uh, it sees a profile, it requests it. And then after that, it doesn't make the request again. Uh, let's, okay, we should, we should read it. So we need to implement query. Um, the methods are chainable and the query is executed by calling execute. Of course, you can make queries over object collections. Interesting. Um, you can select some fields. You can apply filters. Yeah, I, th I think the way that I'm gonna get through this is just to make all of the tests pass uh, and, and, to think, and to think about how I can make those tests pass. So now, whenever query is invoked, it creates an, an instance of the query. So that's gonna give us the select and from methods. Um, so we should at least get here. Um, and then it says query.select.from.execute is not a function. So we now need an execute function. Um, and do they ever chain execute? I don't think they do. So we don't really need to return this here. Um, but to get this very first test passing, we really just need to return this.data because um, we haven't done anything special with like selecting particular columns or anything like that. So our first test should pass um, query.select from numbers execute and then that returns numbers. So uh, query.select.execute uh, no from clause produces an empty array. So expected undefined equal that. So right now, uh, data is totally undefined. So what we should do is we should have a constructor and initially this thing should have some data. So data should be initially equal to an empty array so that later on, if execute gets called, it does return an empty array. So that at least will get all of these passing. <laughs> um, Cool, yeah, and, and so the, the interesting thing about, so we have one test passing, hooray! <laughs> uh, but the interesting thing about that is you can chain these in any order, right? So if you say query.from, query.from is going to set this dot data, and then uh, dot select, right now does nothing. We're gonna have to figure out what that needs to do. Um, and then you can call execute at any time. We did it. I'm gonna play a sound, cause we did it. <laughs> Soundboard. Um, my volume. This might be really loud. Watch your ears. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, that's great. All right, so now we get on to the more complex stuff. Um, there's there's chats happening. Let's just catch up. Ah, <laughs> is that a custom emote or no? You just you sent an image. Cool. Electric boogaloo. Yeah. Um, awesome. So we have one passing test. That's great. Now we get into the trickier stuff. So this is select it, selecting and where over objects. So we're given an array that's not just numbers. It's an array of objects where we need to like only select certain properties. Um, so this is going to get interesting. Um, so test.assert similar. So 
We call query with select from, we pass in the array of persons, we call execute, and that should give back persons. So that is not erroring, so that's good. Uh, profession is a function that takes in the person and returns the profession. Cool. Um, interesting. So our select clause actually accepts a function. That's very nice. I was thinking we were going to have to like parse like strings of, 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 of property names, but this makes it very functional because now we just need to execute that function on every single thing inside of data. This is fun. This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, if we do that, then ultimately we're going to get back an array that has the profession of each person in the array. So uh, we now know that select takes in a function, and um, we kind of need to over. I guess we overwrite data with. Um, um, yeah, I'm thinking. So we can overwrite. If we, I'll overwrite the data right now, that might, we might have to do something different going forward, but what I think I could do right here is, okay, you pass in a function, and we say uh, data.map, this.data.map, and you pass in the function. So, um, undefined is not a function. Um, oh, um, no, 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 so we, we, here's what we have to do. So we have to say, um, uh, if function, if type of function, type of function is equal to function. <laughs> so if it is a function, we're going to execute it and we're going to overwrite data. So we'll say this.data equals that. Uh, and select always returns this. And really, this shouldn't happen until we do execute. So I, I this this should get the test to pass. Like, let's, let's see what it does uh, or if it complains. Um, array, expected array of seven to deeply equal array of seven. And it doesn't. Um, oh, because whenever they call select, data is empty, right? So they called select first, and then they called from. So really what we need to do is when they call select, we, we, not, we kind of need to put this function on, like, as an instance property. So that way when execute is called, it actually gets, gets executed. Um, if we just scroll down, are there any other weird things happening? So we have select, we have where. Okay, so I think what we'll do, um, is for, for right now, um, Wallaby has been stopped. Oh no, maybe I should just pay for it. <laughs> uh, continue trial. Oh, not that one, this one. Um, where were we? But we were right here. So we basically need to store this select function so that when execute is called, we can execute it. So um, I'm just going to say, when you say select, I'll say this.fn equals fn. And then when you do execute, um, We'll say if type of this dot fn is a function, then we're actually going to return the data mapped with that function. Um, otherwise, just return the existing data. Um, cool. Let's start uh, Wallaby back up. Um, start. OK, we're in trial mode. We're going to have to keep resetting it. But I may buy it after this. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, so this one should be passing now, I think, because now when we call execute, uh, yeah, that one's passing. And then um, this one, I think, is passing. This one's failing. So uh, we have our where clause. So select, so query, we pass in profession, so that's going to set data. From, no, 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 select, profession is going to pass in the select function. From will set the data. Where is also a function. Uh, and then it gets executed. So I think again, when um, where is it going to to um, store a function? Um, and let's give this a better name. So when we when we call select with a function, let's let's actually call it uh, select fn select function. <laughs> um, and then down here, we'll say if select function is a function, 
then we'll call select function. And now we need a where query. So where also takes in a function. Um, it's going to return this. And um, we'll say this dot where fn equals fn. <laughs> Um, and where is kind of like like a filter, right? Um, so the where that they're passing in here is is teacher. So person dot profession equals teacher. So what we should do is um, if um, where function is a function, we need to execute it first. So let's let's do this. Let's say um, um, let um, execute data equals this dot data dot slice. So it's, it's going to make a copy of the underlying data. Um, and then um, after all of this, it's going to return the executed data. Um, so what we'll do right here is we'll say execute data equals execute data dot map with the select function. Um, but what we'll do is right before that is we'll filter it down using our where function. So if this dot where function is a function, then we'll say execute data equals execute data dot filter with this dot where function. So uh, we first create a copy of the array. Then if there was a where function, we filter the array down. And then um, if there was um, a select function, we use map to select it, and then we return that actual data. So what is this saying? Cannot read property teacher ID of undefined. Um, cool. So we got that test passing. So <laughs> that one's working. That's wonderful. Um, it's later tests that we're, I think they're testing it out where what if you s try to select a property that doesn't exist? Um, but second passing test, soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's catch up on the chat. Um, but yeah, we're doing great. We're making progress. Next up is group by, but this is fun. I like this a lot. <laughs> Radio Foghorn. Um, yeah, and Andrew Lane is mentioning, we technically could do a function where we pass it in and say it's equal to that. But um, if you look at the, the where function that they passed in, um, uh, is teacher, where is that at, right here? Um, that actually does the comparison. So we can literally just pass that function directly to filter and it, and it handles it for us. <laughs> uh, Robin says, good to see you, but unfortunately I have to go debug a, a legacy Grails application so I don't know anything about Groovy or Grails. That means a lot of deep search in the docs. Good luck, Robin. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, where do these katas from, come from? And hello, Anthus. Uh, they come from Code Wars. So codewars.com. Um, and they have uh, katas of all shapes and sizes and skill levels. Usually on this show, we'll start with like an 8Q, which is the easiest, and then we'll solve gradually harder ones. But today, we're solving a 1Q, which is the hardest, <laughs> uh, where, where we're implementing a functional SQL language in JavaScript, which is pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll share the link to the one that I'm doing. And really, this, the title of this stream and video should just be Implementing Functional SQL, because that's what this whole video is going to be. Yeah. Uh, Mertrana is saying, this is going to be much better than I expected, but I guess the edge cases are going to be awful. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. And that's why I do like having all of these tests, because we basically will just make them pass one by one. <laughs> and then as we get into the harder edge cases, we're going to have to rethink our, our logic and restructure things. Uh, but so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. Uh, Andrew says, I have another one for you if you'd like. Maybe for like, maybe maybe we do one, one Q a month. That, that would, we could have one Q night. <laughs> uh, Master Agent says, I'm back for how long? Uh, about an hour. Uh, 58 minutes. Welcome back, Master Agent Miyazaki. Okay, so two tests passing, like that's great. <laughs> Uh, Parker says, what sort of expertise would you recommend before attempting these katas? So, um, if you are a, like a beginner, you can start at 8Q, and this is really a good way to um, just get better at programming and, and problem solving, um, because 8Qs start at the fundamentals, um, and you can even filter, so I want an 8Q, I want fundamentals. Um, you can also choose your language. I, I do mostly JavaScript, but um, they have a ton of different languages on here. 
and um, you can start at 8Q and just work your way up. Um, the the one Qs are like the one I'm doing is it's fairly difficult. Like, like there's a lot of things underlying knowledge that you had to know to get this stuff working. So I'm creating um, a class or which would be like a constructor function. We're working with this in context. So you kind of have to know how this in JavaScript works. Uh, we're passing functions around. So you have to be comfortable with like small functional programming and higher order functions. Um, we're doing things like map and filter. So you should be comfortable with um, uh, higher order methods that are like built into arrays. But you don't have to start there. This is like as hard as it gets. You can start at like an eight or a seven Q if you really want to. <laughs> Uh, Anthes is saying, I think this is a lot more interesting than, say, Project Euler. The math-based ones are so boring. Yeah, they get really old really fast. There are some math-based ones on here, um, and I come across them all the time. Like, someone suggested one earlier where you had to actually simplify an algebraic expression. Uh, it would have been interesting, but um, the mathy ones do, do get a bit old. Uh, so the, the, these are fun because some of them are puzzles. Some of them are, like, learning about language features and different things like that. Good morning, uh, Krishna. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm still using um, Mojave. I'm not going to upgrade to Catalina until the the water's calm. <laughs> and hello, Kikabom. Welcome. Uh, Robin is saying, and the funny part is, front end they use is React 5, which is pretty old, so no hooks without updating the React library. React 5? Uh, 0 0.5? Isn't it at like 0 0.16 right now? Oh, it's 16. Okay, version 16. Wow. Yeah, version 5 isn't even on their website anymore. Um, oh, it's pronounced Euler, Project Euler. That's good to know. Like Euler's number? I thought it was Euler's number, though. Isn't it after the Euler? Oh, no, the Euler number. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep going with this. So we have, um, we have select from where working. These next tests are group by... So this one. So we're given that same array. Um, profession is, I guess, a select clause. Oh, no, and this, ca this time it's a group by clause. Ooh, very interesting. Um, so, and let me see if I can I do a format. There we go. That's a bit easier to look at. Um, yeah, so these are, are the objects that we're querying over. And then we see query select from persons group by profession. And what we should get back is, oh, we get, we get multiple arrays. I was thinking we, um, we create like an object with keys, but this wants um, an array of arrays where each array, the first value is the group that it's in. And the second value are all of the things that belong in that group. And then the next thing is the next group. The next thing is the next group. Okay. So, yeah, right here we're saying, no, 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 which test? Yeah, we need to get this test working, which is currently failing. Um, my scroll bar is really hard to see in this theme. Where's my scroll bar? Can anyone else see it? <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, Right there, cool. Um, group by is not a function, so we need we need to implement the group by function. So we will do that right here, and this takes in a function, and very similarly similarly to like select and where we'll just say this dot um, group by function equals that function, and we'll return this uh, continue trial. Okay, <laughs> um, so we have our group by function being registered. And then when it's executed, okay, we need arrays of arrays. So I, I think we would, group by would always come after where and select by. So you do your, your filtering with where, your select, which reduces the number of properties you're going to get, and then you do the group by on the resulting array. So I think we'll, we'll add our check right here. So let's say if type of this dot group by function is equal to a function, um, then we need to do the group by. So um, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a reduce, because we need to uh, reduce a flat array into an array of multiple arrays. 
Um, and I think what I'll do is I'm, I'm actually going to just reduce this to an object with where the keys are the type, like teacher, scientific, and the values are an array. And then once we have that, I'll turn it into an array of arrays. Because to me, it's it it um, it's not as nice to work with like arrays of arrays and like weird weird syntax, weird weird nesting. So um, let's say um, const grouped is going to be this. Oh no, it's going to be execute data dot reduce. Um, and then let's look at our group by function. What does our group by function do? It returns person dot profession. Okay, so we're gonna have our um, grouped and we're gonna have each item. And um, ultimately we're reducing this down to uh, an object. And our key here is going to be item, is going to be uh, this dot group by function invoked with the item. So uh, in this case, the group by function takes in the item, which is gonna be a person, and it's gonna return person.profession, which is gonna be something like teacher. And so that's gonna give us the key. Um, and then we can say grouped at that key is going to be um, either itself or an empty array. And then now that we've set it, uh, we'll say grouped by at key dot push item. And then our reduce also always returns grouped. So uh, now if we, I think logs will work, if we log grouped, we see we have an object where the keys are the, um, the type and the value is an array of all the things of that type. And then we have, so we have teacher, we have scientific, cool. But ultimately this wants it to be an array of an arrays. So I think if I just do like object dot entries that'll give us what we want let's try it of root and that gives us yeah this is what we want so because uh each thing is going to be an array with the key and then an array of all the values an array with the key and then an array of all the, is that what we want So we want an array with the key and then an array with all the values. And all of that is in a single array. Let's see. Expected or, oh, so, I mean, this might actually work. Let's just, let's just return this. So, um, like that. Look at it. Um, cannot read property profession of undefined. Um, I mean, technically that one's passing. And that one's passing. And this one is failing. So that that did it. That's awesome. So um, I think I just saw, yeah. So, so Sebastian is saying object.keys. Um, object.keys would have just given us the like the professions. So that would have just given us an array with uh, like teacher, politician, and scientific in it. But basically what I wanted was uh, an array that has the key with an array that is the value itself next to each other. So object.entries will pluck out the keys and the values and put them in an array of each. So that did it. Uh, but now we're failing because, why are we failing? Not that one. This one cannot read property profession of undefined. Um, so this is select is passed in profession group. So select profession group that takes in a group and returns group at zero from persons group by profession. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. So in this case, the select needs to happen after the group by. 
Yeah. Huh. How can we... How can we tell the difference? So, so what's what's happening here is right now I'm doing. Um, so, if there was a where where function, we execute a filter. If there was a select function, we execute a map, and then we do the group by. But what this test is asking for is it's basically like, what if um, we actually want to select after the group by is done? Because after we do the group by, this select is just choosing the group of the result. Huh. Select profession from persons group by profession. And then this one we were doing up here. Uh, Antha is saying we need to do it in the order that they call the functions. Um, possibly, yeah. And Greg is just saying maybe we need to score, store the call stack. I like that idea. So basically, when a function gets called, we have a stack of the order that they should be executed in. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Because when we get down here, yes, if we call select first, um, no, the, the thing is, if we call select first on our data, that's going to break because our data is an array of um, peoples. So... I think it's, oh, if, yeah, 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 I think, I think here, <laughs> um, because if you call a select and you have a group by, then obviously, I think just by default, you're selecting on the group by. Um, just going to do this. Um. See what I broke. So that one passes now, and then this one fails. So query dot select from persons group by profession comma name. Okay, so group by can take multiple, and then it does does a nested grouping. Ugh, that's ugly. But I I think I think um in in this scenario, if a group by was called the select has to be on the result of the group by. So that means in the order of the functions right now, select does need to come next. But I like what you all are thinking. Let's catch up on the chat. I like what you're thinking in terms of um, we, we potentially need to store the order that the functions were called in, but yeah. Oh, there's no drivers for a 1080 Ti. Do you have like a Hackintosh or something like that? Uh, just some Aussie has a great tip. Instead of using the scroll bar, you can just hold shift and then scroll. Let's try it. Ooh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Um, should this follow the normal order of operations for, say, MySQL? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just making the tests pass one at a time, and I think they're gradually uh, coercing me towards a solution. But I don't really know. We may need to store the call stack. I don't know just yet. Uh, Santhosh Raghav is asking, can you make a tutorial on how to integrate an editor slash playground on a page, which compiles HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to React Review using open source libraries? Um, I can talk about this later because it's a little off topic, but it, I mean, this would be very similar to, um, like CodePen, right? Or Code Sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> Metalhead CJ? <laughs> what did, what did I do? I don't know. Um. Oh, I'll have to click the link on uh, on <laughs> on Twitch because my uh, my thing keeps breaking links. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, Anthos is saying MySQL goes from joins where group having select. Hmm. Uh, oh. oh. The only thing about this um, wallaby is I have to keep enabling the trial, which is okay. It's not a bad thing, but how much does it cost? Maybe I'll just buy it. There we go. Um, I'm going to hold on to your question, Anthos, because we may need that, that ordering later. So, or not your question, your comment. Your comment is there. It's safe. <laughs> Um, you probably do something like this in the constructor. So this dot stack equals type group by function. Yeah, 
And so we could push the when they're called. The, the thing is, um, if you look at every single test, it's pretty much always like a query select from group by. Query select from group by, yeah. We'll see. You, you, are, you all are probably right. I just don't want to get too far ahead of myself. <laughs> Um, uh, Master Agent is saying, I think the idea is to implement a functional system to work with SQL, so not using other paradigms like imperative procedural. Yeah, so it could be, um, this doesn't necessarily follow the same thing as like MySQL or, or something like that, but I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> Metalhead CJ. <laughs> Hackintosh, nice. Okay, um, so this next one, super tricky. <laughs> so you're given two group by functions. Uh, um, Oh, this is doable. Basically, the nested array is also grouped. So after you group it once, you go over each of those arrays and group them as well. Because uh, group by is now past profession and name. Um, let's look at all of the group by invocations. Yeah, because eventually it's called with um, several, three, four, five. Um, one, one, two, yeah. So it's called multiple times with multiple different functions. Um, where are we at? We are right here. I think this is where our failing test is. No, right here. Right here. So profession and then name. So right now, our group by function um, just takes the first group by function. Um, what we should probably do is um, we can get the the rest operator to get our functions, and we'll just store that there. So group by functions <laughs> equals um, all of the functions, and then um, uh, really we could just say if this dot group by functions dot length. So if there are um, group by functions, um, and we'll say if if it exists and it has a length, uh, then we'll we'll do the thing. And now um, we can't just directly call a group by function. We basically need to to call each individual function. Um, so I mean, it, in the simplest case, uh, we could just grab the first one equals uh, this dot group by functions at zero, and this should allow all of our, our previous tests to continue passing because that just grabs grabs the first one. Um, so all of our previous tests are still passing, but now this one is failing because it has two. So we have to think about this. Basically, profession happens first, and so that's going to be um, our, our grouped object right here is going to... Um, Yeah, our grouped object in the initial run is an object where the keys are what we're grouping by and the values are an array. And we now need to um, go into the nested arrays and do the group by function again. Um, so, really we can reuse this, reuse this function for sure. Um, Let's uh, let's extract this. I don't think it needs to be a class function. So like if we refactor this, um, refactor, extract to a function in the global scope. We'll just call this uh, group by. I think yeah. Um, and so now we have this little function that takes in um, all the data that it's it's operating on and the function that it's grouping it by. Um, and really, it just needs to return object.entries of, of grouped. It doesn't need to overwrite it. Um, so the first time we do a group by, we're now going to get an array of arrays. And then the second time we do a group by, we need to call the group by on each of the nested um, arrays that got created. Um, 
cool. And thanks for the uh, the follow, uh, Mirchan. Howdy, howdy. Welcome, Adam. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> We're doing a 1Q kata today. It's very difficult. Um, okay, so... That works for the first one. I'm just trying to think. So this nested... Basically, if, if we called our group by function again on the nested array, we should get this result. I'm just trying to figure out how can we reliably always get the inner value? I guess it's just the last value in the array, right? So um, instead of just grabbing the first function, we can say, um, pass in the array of functions, and then we'll do like a recursive call. So um, group by functions, and um, we'll say, um, and really, really, I want, the, I want a copy of this, because I'm going to be modifying it. Um, so create a copy. Um, so that we can, uh, remove like the next one. So here we'll say, uh, group by function equals uh, group by functions dot, um, shift. So that'll give us the first value, the first group by function in the array. Um, and, um, we'll say if group by functions dot length then we're going to need like a recursive call um, otherwise we just call object dot entries with grouped should I be doing this recursively I could just do it with a loop <laughs> let's do it with a loop yeah we're gonna do it with a loop um, so we just go for let i equal zero while i is less than group by functions dot length, and that's going to give us the group by function, and um, we're going to do this, um, and this is group by functions at i, and so. On the first iteration, the data that we're reducing on is execute data. Um, so let's let's do this. So let's say let's say let data to reduce or data to group equals execute data, and we're gonna do that here. Um, and let's say let data to return is nothing initially and then on each iteration we're going to say something like data to return equals um, object dot entries of, of that thing um, and we'll return data to return but what we'll do is on the next iteration we're going to overwrite data to group to be the nested values inside of our object dot entries here um, I mean, this is, I think, where the recursive calls comes in. I don't know. I'm going to check on the chat. I'm sure everyone's yelling at me. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, Anthos is saying, not certain. I like the idea that the group by function doesn't exist within the query class in the same way that it'd be weird if select was outside of it. OK. Um, thanks for the follow, Anthos. Um, see you later. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. And thanks for the follow, uh, Cecil Philip. Welcome. Uh, why don't I use a for of? I could, and I probably should. <laughs> Whoa, is this a 1Q? It is a 1Q. We're trying. I don't know. I mean, we've been streaming for an hour and 20 minutes, so. Uh, well, you should do recursion, I think, to keep it more functional and less imperative, I would say, instead of a loop. Yeah, I think I will. And uh, thank you. And I think it's going to, I think it's going to, continue to try. <laughs> um, I think it's going to have to be um, recursive, because really I want to, like, call this function on each nested thing. 
Okay. Um, ultimately, though, this this should all of our previous tests should still be passing. Like that one fails, but this one still passes. Cool. So all of our previous tests are still passing. Now it's just a matter of uh, grouping this in a nested way. So uh, right here, our data to return um, is going to, that's going to be the like array of arrays. Now, if we iterate over that, each value is an array and we want to group the nested array. So um, we can say data to return dot for each group. Actually, we can say data to return equals data to return dot map. And we're going to get each uh, group and uh, values, uh, like group name. And values, but we'll, we'll destructure it. <laughs> and ultimately, we want to return an array with the group name. And uh, we want to do group by on those inner values. I just want some space here. Um, I probably have like an infinite loop somewhere um, because we'll say group by and we'll say uh, group by functions. Yeah, and then we don't need this for loop. Okay. Yeah, so we don't need the for loop. We're going to say the group by function equals group by functions dot shift which gives us the first value. And then we'll pass in group by functions to this nested thing. Um, group by function is not a function. Um, but really, if, if we, if we um, um, Data to group, are we even using this? Yeah, we are. And we need a check. So we'll say like if um, not group by functions dot length, then we're just going to return the executed data. Um, and really, we could just return this. We don't have to be weird about it. Um, and really, we can just return this and we don't need that weird data to return thing and really we don't need <laughs> this data to group uh, value so uh, we group it on the first run that's going to give us the group name and the array of values but now we're going to group it again to get a nested um, thing which we will be returning so we'll get the, the nested name and the nested values. Does this work? No. Expected array of three to deeply equal array of three. Um, let's store this in a value and just like log what we're getting. So we get teacher, object, object, scientific, object, object, politician with an object. Um, looks like we're missing our nested array. So I'll look into that. Hello, the coding cat. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let's see. Uh, does, is, is, is group by functions, I mean, is array.shift remove the first value in the array? I think it does, right? Um, we 
We used that this morning. Removes the first element in the array. So yeah, so that that should grab the first group by function, which in our case is going to be um, profession. And then um, passing in values and group by functions. And so if group by functions doesn't have a length, it just returns the data itself. But in this case, it will. Oh, we can't, we can't shift it because we need to reuse that function on multiple items. Yeah, so that, that was, uh, um, yeah, we can't shift it. <laughs> um, Okay, let's think about this. Because if we shift it, um, the first one will get to use that function and then the next one won't. Actually, we'll, oh no, we'll, we'll slice it. So we'll just make a copy again. Because if we make a copy, um, then each of these nested groups will be able to shift that next function and, and use the inner value. Um, let's see. So we have teacher, Peter. Oh, I think we did it. No, we didn't do it. Scientific. Oh, and then it's grouping by name. Yeah, we did it. We did it. <laughs> I can't believe we did it. Um, yeah, so we take that. Put that there. That's a passing test. Cool. Um, and... Uh, I mean, th th this is functional. So it's functional because, it, uh, for one, it's recursive. But for two, um, we are uh, passing in, like, copies of the data. We're not really, like, modifying any data anywhere. So that's awesome. That's great. Can't believe we figured that out. Huh. Huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're doing a 1Q. So this 1Q is a, a functional SQL. Uh, it's pretty tricky, but we're, we're making one, pe one test pass at a time. <laughs> it's a very hard one. Yep. Uh, Mayor Chan is asking, is it possible to override the behavior of console.log on objects? Like maybe object.prototype.toString or something? Because object happens too often and it's really annoying. Um, yeah, you, you can definitely override the, the to string of an object to do something like stringify. Um, and the... The object thing is happening with node because it only logs a certain number of levels deep into the object. Um, so there's that. And, and I guess you saw what I just did, which was like to stringify it so that I could actually see the nested data. Um, but yeah. And I believe actually if you just override... We could try it really quick. If you override the toString of the object, then um, I think that's what console log will return. So if we say like object.prototype.toString, um, it's just a little function that returns what? <laughs> and then if we uh, try to log uh, an object with the name of CJ, um, is this running? I may I may have broken stuff, but I I think that technically that would work. No, it didn't work. Um, I mean, you could override log to detect if the type of the thing is an object, then to do a stringify. Otherwise, just call the native log. Um, but yeah, JavaScript is very loose. You 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 can pretty much override anything you want. The toughest. <laughs> GG, thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, Sciific. It's 11 a.m. in Malaysia. That's a good time. Uh, soundboard time. Yeah, let's uh, let's cheer. <laughs> uh, which one? Um, how about? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Uh, thanks for the follow, Sebastian. I appreciate it. 
Uh, wouldn't something be simpler to use a tool like JQ, uh, JQ through a pipe to see your nested JSON data? Uh, let's see what message you sent. Um, wouldn't it be simpler? I'm curious why my, <laughs> my chat is doing that to your message. Uh, wouldn't it be simpler to use a tool like JQ through a pipe to see your nested JSON data? Um, what is JQ? Not jQuery, huh? Oh, um, it's like said for JSON data. Very interesting. So JQ is like said for JSON. You can use it to slice and filter and map and transform your structured data with the same ease that said, awk, and grep give you. Very cool. I've never heard of this. Um, so maybe but but honestly like i'm so used to using um just like the console log and the debugging tools that uh, stringifying it is pretty much good enough for me at least for now this is really i'm gonna i'm gonna bookmark that that's a really cool really cool thing <laughs> uh my filter ignores white space it does so the i found like an, an optimistic swear word finder that basically if it detects that a word is almost a swear word or if it's close enough to one it will actually uh filter it which is what's happening so yeah I thought he said, oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so test is passing. Good to go. What's the next one? Um, and this says, so select from persons, group by profession, name, age, marital status. So uh, the issue with this one is... Um, It's multiple group buys. So what was the one that we just solved? That was then profession, then name. Okay. So this should give us profession, name, age. Okay. Um, and then let's um, let's see what we're what we're getting back here. So we have teacher, Peter, 20, married. And then we see Peter, teacher, Peter, teacher. And then we see Michael. So I th so um, person that suggested set, will this do like comparison of objects? Uh, manual. Basic filters, the pipe operator. So the pipe operator combines two filters by feeding the outputs of one on the, on the left into the input of the one on the right. Hmm. I mean, I kind of want to do just like a JSON diff of like my result versus their result because like this log um, is doing like nice, nice nesting. So I can't exactly tell what's going wrong. Cause then we have Michael, age 50, single. We have scientific, Anna, age 20, married. Um, Rose, 50, married. Politician, Anna, 50, married. And this has like scientific, Anna, 20, married. Rose, 50. So like, I, I think I'm kind of getting it. Um, Let's see if I run these tests in the terminal if we get uh, better error messages. Oh. So, um, expected is a number and then the actual is the actual, I see. Ah, so when I did uh, object.keys, it converted those numbers into strings. Man, man, oh man, oh man. That's that's tricky. So basically, um, yeah, I think, yeah, when I do object.entries, that's changing the type. 
Oh, this is tricky. <laughs> Man. Um. Slap a parse int in there. Uh, it's so yeah, but the thing is, um, you have these other nested keys like Peter and married. So I could, <laughs> at least right now, to get this test passing, I could just uh, try to parse it as an integer, and if it is an integer, uh, give back the value. Otherwise, use the existing value. Huh. <laughs> uh, when will I finish the React app? I'm gonna try to do that probably like Sunday. Uh, so th that's the Snap Garden uh, Maps React app. I'll try to work on that this weekend. Uh, Brosif Daddy Pants, hello. <laughs> First time uh, checking out, uh, watching my channel. Do I typically do JavaScript content? Yep, that's pretty much all I do here. So every Wednesday is uh, Code Katas Day. Um, where we solve code katas, and uh, on this code word website, they have katas that, and, and kata is a word for like a, a practice, a, a challenge. They have katas that range from fairly simple, like 8Q, ranging all the way up to uh, 1Q, and um, they have it in many different languages. I always just do JavaScript, and today, for the very first time, I'm attempting to do a 1Q, which is this problem, um, implementing a functional SQL <laughs> programming language yeah and I mean they they I've seen even harder one cues than this so if you've heard of this uh, esoteric programming language this queue has you actually implement a transpiler um, yeah they're they're um, they're hard <laughs> they're very hard but uh, you usually I do easier ones more approachable ones and um, this morning I streamed and I did some easier ones uh, has anyone here tried writing in Whitespace? It's a language that uses only white spaces. <laughs> I've never, I've never heard of it. Uh, I can search for like Whitespace SOLang. There we go. Developed in 2003. It's an esoteric programming language that uses only white spaces syntax. Everything other than spaces, tabs, or line feeds is ignored. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Your code is literally nothing but spaces. <laughs> Uh, yeah. String. Yeah. Thanks, John. John caught it. Um, and so now we got to figure out <laughs> what do we do. And I mean, I guess what I could do is whenever I want to, I want to solve it in a more gen general way. Like just trying to parse the group name is one thing. But I guess what we could do is before we um, put it in grouped, we could store the type. And then parse it back into that type. I guess numbers are really the only place where we're going to run into that scenario where if it's a string versus a number. Um, so, like, if I were to log uh, type of key right here, um, I mean, we get a bunch of stuff, but eventually we're going to get number, right? And so we could store that and then use that whenever we're turning it into this. Um, yeah, I mean, let's just do that. So let's just say like uh, group types, and that's just going to be an object. And then we'll say uh, group types at um, key equals type of uh, key. And then when we get down here, um, we can say um, if group types oh, continue trial continue trial. So if group types at group name is equal to number, then we can say uh, group name equals a number with group name. And that should turn it into a number. Uh, oh, and this, this just needs to be a string. So uh, if the type is number. I got it. Woohoo! <laughs> um, let's, let's get rid of this console log. But we have ourselves a passing test. Cool. 
Keep on moving. The next one. That one passes too. Cool. Ooh, comparison. Order, okay, group by, order by, natural comparison. Oh, that's gonna be tricky. Cool. But we got two more passing tests. <laughs> okay, um, let's catch up on the chat. It just says filtering and remapping, no comparison. Um, what was that in, in reference to, Mr. Brosef? Daddy Pants? I missed the context, sorry. White space issues? <laughs> uh, thanks, John. John caught it. It's the age. Typical JavaScript. Slap a parsent in there. Stringify what they are showing. Um, yeah. So, and, and honestly, um, the console with Mocha is giving me, is giving me better uh, comparisons than running with um, uh, Wallaby. There's, I mean, uh, maybe there's a way to see... Instead of just seeing the failing tests in the log, um, maybe we can see that like expected versus um, what the actual value was. Um, but Wallaby, I am new to Wallaby. I don't know if John, if you know um, how to get some better logs with Wallaby. <laughs> Mayor Chan says, uh, I've been using Linux for years and the only thing that scares me more than editing xorg conf is using sed or awk. Um, I use I use uh, said back in my Linux administration days um, for like replacing values in config files. I, I basically created like my own templating language for setting up uh, like Drupal websites. Uh, try the app. I guess that would help. Yeah. Um, is it like a separate Electron app? Once you have Wallaby installed and running, uh, you can use the Wallaby app to get coverage reports and real-time bird's eye view. Open. Oh, wow. That's kind of scary. I think, I guess it's just looking at like a local host. I kind of want to see what's the network traffic here. Like, how did it do that? Um, uh, is it a WebSocket connection? Yeah. WebSocket connection on port 51235. Uh, <laughs> and that's what's uh, sending the test results. Cool. All right, so if we go in. Uh, those two are passing. Our group by tests are failing. Um, enhance. Files. Um, so we're good there, we're good there, and then we get down to here. Mm. I don't really see like the output. <laughs> um, so like if, I guess if I run, oh, um, let's see. The current thing is uh, group group by dot order by is not a function. Okay, because I don't have an order by function yet. That makes total sense. I can fix that. Um, okay, cool. We are here. Um, I try to do all my katas in C++. Things like this would be bloody murder for me. Yeah. <laughs> JavaScript makes this very, very easy, especially with, like, the functional aspect of this. So, like, we can pass these where functions and group by functions directly in um, and then just store them and use them later. Um, it's, like, super dynamic. We've got our, like, our little uh, recursive call here. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Ty Sweezy. Welcome. Uh, Andrew Lane is saying, why don't you just convert the entire thing into an array with reduce? Because it's, um, so when, when I'm doing this group, group by types, um, that is automatically storing a property on the object with that key. So like in the case of group by, um, 
like the, the, the in the most simplest case, like group by profession. So that stores a key called teacher within array. And then I can instantly reach in and grab that. So if we've already seen it before, I just grab the value and push into the array. If I was reducing with just arrays, we would need to do like basically, basically like nested iteration. So we would store the type, at least that's how I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to get a similar data structure. We would need to um, store the type, then search to see if that, well, we'll search, well, first we get the type. Then we see, have we seen that type before? And we'd like search through the array. Um, and then if we have, we use that array to push into. And if we haven't, we insert a new value. Um, so reducing to an array uh, would have lots of nested iteration, whereas this creates all of the groups and it can easily push them into the arrays and they stay grouped. And then we can go through and turn it into this weird nested array structure easily with, with object.keys. At least that, that's my thinking. Maybe there's a better way I'm not thinking of, but that's, that's my thinking. <laughs> Just trying the profanity filter. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, and I think, I think, guess this is the Wallaby app. I clicked, I clicked on it, but, um, maybe once I have, uh, different errors, it'll give me better results. Cause right now it's just that the function doesn't exist. Uh, hello, Eki86. Welcome. Uh, Saeed is asking, did I put on weight? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't track my weight and I don't track what I eat. So it's very possible. Very possible. Uh, Andrew Lane is saying, wait, you can run a WebSocket server as a VS Code extension? I'm pretty sure you can have a VS Code extension that has like an Express server inside of it. But that's basically what's happening. Th that VS Code extension sp spun up a socket server. And then when this web page loads, it sees if that socket server is listening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, motivation says, I had time to sleep. Come back. And CJ is still here for part two. Uh, did I fix the YouTube chat problem? in your uh, part one? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, earlier, YouTube just had issues where it wasn't listing the currently live live streams. Um, and I guess it also happened this time, but then I changed my API request to get upcoming live streams and that seemed to work, but yeah. Um, Andrew says, want to install my VS Code extension and host my website for me? <laughs> See, that's what I'm thinking of. Like, if you got somebody to install an extension and then you directed them to go to a web page, you could do some shady stuff, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if the extensions are running in a secure context, but they potentially have access to your file system. It's crazy. Uh, Brosif is saying there are only four one Q problems for C++. Uh, yeah, I guess when I clicked on, uh, oh no, because I'm I'm filtered right now. I don't want it to be just fundamentals. Um, yeah, make sure you're not filtered. But let's see, C++ four Q. I see five. But it's still that's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot. Um, JavaScript. Cool. Um, see, Wallaby advanced logging in value explorers in the doc. All right, let's check it out. Um, Wallaby JS documentation, advanced logging. The most straightforward way is to just console.log anything. Um, it's kind of what I did, but we're running into that issue like where when node console logs something, it, um, and it has like nested arrays or nested objects, it doesn't go deeper. Um, identifier expressions. Live comments. Yeah, I've, I've seen those features with um, Quokka JS before. Performance testing, um, and then uh, value explorer. The value explorer integrates with Wallaby's existing variable thingy. Okay. Whoa, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. Um, Cause that's, that's basically like the uh, Chrome debugger with like your current scope and everything. What did they type in? Show, oh, show value. Uh, 
Um, so we are at this point. Uh, did the line have to be selected? Oh yeah, so like select the line. Hmm. Yeah. Um, not quite. Maybe the um the app will will help us out, but let's let's keep on going. So the the error we are at is right about here because we need to implement um uh, order by cool so um now we need our order by function <laughs> and it takes in uh, a function we'll just say uh, this dot order by equals that function and it needs to return this so that it can be chained um So this selects the profession count from person. So it groups by profession, um, selects profession count. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it just takes the length of the array. I thought it was gonna like do some complex computation, but yeah. So it grabs the group, it grabs the, the length of the array, cool. Um, and then the natural compare um needs to be executed hmm oh wait uh this is this the one that's failing first well that one's fine that one's fine um So order by, it's, I mean, really we can just pass this into the sort function, but the issue is going to be um, the result of our select is going to, are going to be arrays. So when you compare two arrays, um, that's not a thing. So do we need to compare the first index of all the things that we pass into it? Huh. Um, yeah, because then the select function happens, and then we'll say if type of this dot uh, order by function is a function, then um, execute data equals execute data dot sort with this dot order by function. And I don't think that's going to work because uh, we're trying to sort arrays. Um, and really, I mean, we, we could actually reach in um, and grab the first value in the array. Because mm. um, we could say execute data dot map. Um, we're going to grab the, um, so basically it's like the key and the count. And we really just want to restore, uh, return the count and then uh, sort the count. What's this complaining about? Unexpected token. Oh, well that wouldn't work because we're changing the array entirely. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Um. Hmm. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? So the, the, the hard part here is the natural compare function that they're giving us is just comparing two values. The result of our um, select and group by is going to give us this. It's just going to be in the wrong order, right? It's going to be in this order. How can we take this, pass it through the natural compare while still using the natural compare function to get back the result? Um, I mean, I, t to me, it, it feels dirty to like reach in and grab this second value because like, how do we know that's always what we're going to grab it by? 
um, or maybe like uh, the order by function will really only ever be called if the result looks something like this. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, motivation is saying I need to find something like Quaka for Python instead of using the debugger. Um, I don't know if it exists, but yeah, it'd be cool. Uh, command shift equal is short to shortcut to wallaby commands. Let's try it. Nice. John's got all the tips. Cool. That facial expression was the best. <laughs> uh, thanks, Marquez. <laughs> uh, CJ cut his hair since there's no more red hat. Yep. You can see. I'm all buzzed. Uh, the variable name for order by needs to be add function. Let's see what I did. This dot order by, we're passing in a function. Uh, order by passes in the function. And then this dot order by function. Sure. Not sure what you mean, Greg. Um, Rosef is asking, have you done any of those transpiler slash compiler problems on code wars? How long does it take? I haven't tried them yet. I have really just, this is the first one Q I've ever done on code wars. <laughs> You're witnessing history, <laughs> basically. Uh, Bob says, do some racket katas. What are rackets? What are you talking about? <laughs> Um, cool. So I've been streaming for two hours. I'm going to take like a, I'm gonna take a 10 minute break, but I'm going to come back and I'm, I'm going to finish this. Like, um, yeah. Okay. The order by function, you set this dot order by, but, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That makes so much sense. And I think that's what Gre exactly what Greg was talking about. There we go. <laughs> um, order by function. Cool. Cool. <laughs> um, Yes, thank you, John. Um, and thanks for the follow, Brosif. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take a 10 minute break. The oh, the language racket. I've never heard of the language racket. Is it on here? Racket, it's in beta. Uh, they don't have any one cues. What about seven cues? Some of odd numbers. I mean, what, what even is racket? A general purpose, multi-paradigm programming language. Oh, in Lisp, Lisp, Lisp and Scheme family, family. Very cool. Are you, do, are, um, Bob, are you programming in Racket? I, sh I should do some functional programming. Yeah, it would be fun to do some like Lisp or Haskell or something like that. Do they have Haskell on here? Uh, um, yeah, they do. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we fixed that, so we should, we should be good to go there. Um, oh, uh, and then um, does that make it pass? I didn't even check. It does. Wait, no, no. No, it does. How? How? <laughs> How can you compare an array to an array? Uh, profession. Yeah, it's passing. I don't understand. It's, okay, but it's working. Uh, good morning, Mahidra. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, and Bob is saying it's basically a scheme dialect of Lisp. Very interesting. Now, that would be fun. I feel like if we go down the functional programming route, like this this whole channel is just, it's gone. Like, we're just going to be so much, we're going to we're gonna be doing so many, like, difficult and weird and hard to understand things that, like, nobody will watch anymore. But I don't know. So that is awesome. Uh, and if we take a look at the Wallaby app, we should see our passing tests. Uh, yeah, we got our group by. <laughs> uh, next up, we have our numbers tests. Um, so we have to do dot having. Let's see what that's going to look like. So we have is even, parity, is prime. So we do. Cool. So then if we do group by parity. Um, That one should be passing, right? Yeah, that one's passing. Group by parity and prime, that should be passing as well because we haven't changed anything there. And then we have, um, so select from numbers, group by parity, having odd. Whoa. <laughs> and then it gets rid of, uh, it gets rid of the even. Very cool. 
Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on this. Um, it's only 9:30 p.m. my time, so I have at least another two hours or so. We're gonna finish this kata. It's gonna be good. Functional Friday. You know we should functional Fridays. I'm about it. <laughs> um, Bob is saying I just finished that section in my principles of programming language. Moving on to prologue. Oh, very interesting. Um, yeah, I took a programming languages class. Um, we didn't really learn a lot of languages though. We basically just implemented a um, a compiler. I forget for what language. It might have been like a C compiler. And we implemented um, like an abstract abstract syntax abstract syntax tree parser or a generator based on a based on syntax. Um, but yeah, we never got into like functional programming languages and stuff like that. Is that in a uni or a book? I think that question's for Bob. All right, I'm gonna take a 10 minute break. Thanks everyone for sticking around as long as you have. This has been super fun. Um, I'm going to, should I, should I go ahead and push up the code? Who wants me to push up this code to GitHub? <laughs> uh, Mahidra says, every day I learn something new from your channel. Uh, thanks, you're very welcome Mahidra. Thanks for tuning in. Do it, all right, I'll push it up. And then you all can criticize my code and I'll fix it when I get back. Uh, I need to make sure I have a git ignore because I did some npm installs in here. Whoa. Sparkles, uh, episode 32 in progress. Progress, progress. So there's that one, and uh, functional SQL is the one that I've been working on. It looks pretty, like that's that's some decent looking code, but I w I welcome your criticisms. There you go. <laughs> um, just do it, push it, do it. <laughs> uh, what's up, Sharp three sixty? Welcome to the stream. Oh, you have a, uh, it's RabbitWorks. He has a, a Twitch account. Cool. Sharpie360. Very cool. Uh, and thanks for the follow, Peter Rowe. Push it real good. Cool. So I'm going to take a 10 minute break. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in as long as you have. Stay awesome if you are going to head out. Um, but I'll be back. See you soon.
Hello, we are back. And I just realized um, my break timer hasn't been running. <laughs> it wasn't running this morning and it wasn't running now. So my break timer is going. That's good. <clears throat> uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Kalaradin. Welcome. Hello, John Soto. Welcome. Um, okay, uh, John who's the, the wallaby, the resident wallaby expert, <laughs> saying, uh, try this wallaby command, uh, show line test, and the next time you need to see full object output. Okay, let's try it. Um, <laughs> uh, Sharpie is saying, you're coding an audio format with Witcher 3 background music and my Surge gameplay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, show line tests. Let's, I mean, I guess right now, um, Well, let's start it up. Well, let me start. And we are right about here. This is the one that's failing. Oh, uh, and what was the Bollaby command? Command shift equals show line tests. Uh, oh, and then like I would choose the specific variable. Parity result equals that. And then throw in parity result there. Um, and then there we say show line tests. Line is not covered or covered by tests. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. But uh, right now, the error that we're getting is uh, having is not a function. So we need to implement that. Having takes in a function. Um, that does something on the group. So let's get back into it. So we have our query here. Uh, we want having. Takes in a function. This dot having function equals that function. And it, we return this. Um, let's see what it needs to do. It's kind of just a filter, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think that would work at least for this case. Um, so if this dot having function is a function, uh, then we can just do a filter uh, with this dot having function. And it's a passing test. Um, this one's interesting. Order by descendant compare. And that worked. <laughs> uh, oh, now uh, having potentially has multiple. Oh no, our where clause has multiple. We haven't um, we haven't done that yet. So right now, where is only taking in a single function, and this test is passing in two where clauses. Um, and apparently, it defaults to or. Okay. Um, cool. So our where now needs to take in an array of functions. And then we have where functions equals those functions. Um, so we have an array of functions. And then um, where are we doing the where clause? We're doing it right here. Um, yeah, we could do some some nice little, some little functional stuff right here. So. Um, Let's do this. We have like our row of data and we want to return row. Um, where we map over the where functions. So uh, first we need to check if this dot where functions um, has a length instead of checking it to be a function. Now we're just assuming that it has functions inside of it. Um, and then now when we do the filter, we can say um, where functions dot um, sum. So sum is a, a, an array method where um, if any of these things return true, it returns true. So sum, where we have that function, and we want to execute that function on the row. Um, 
So the where functions do return true or false. Um, and this breaks our previous tests. So it, it passes for this, but uh, in a previous test, it's trying to access a property. So cannot read property teacher ID of undefined. Um, and let's just see where we're looking at uh, teacher ID. Oh, this might be a later test, actually. Let's look at the uh, the overall output. Yeah, it's a later test. It's the, like the frequency test. It's too easy. Too easy. It's, I should stop saying that. It's going to get harder. <laughs> uh, hello, terminal. Welcome to the stream. Um, you can pass multiple having functions. Oh, really? Uh, I guess I didn't see that, but like dot having, dot having. Uh, where are we at? So... Uh, what did, which one did we just do? We just did this. So where dot execute. Um, group by. Group by. Yeah, I see. So now having, um, if it's chain like basically we need to push into an array of having functions, uh, and then we call and then we'll call them in the order that they were pushed in. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Mirchana is saying, if it's or, maybe you can apply where functions individually, store the results, and finally combine them into a set. Um, I might not be making any sense. It's 6 a.m. here. Um, so basically what I did with the or function, or like with the where functions, was we, so we have an array of functions. We're going to iterate over them and invoke them on the given row. And if any one of them returns true, we're done. We don't try executing the next one. Um, and if that returns true, then it shows up in the filter. So that that seems to work. I think we'll keep moving. Um, cool, so we are right here, frequency tests. Um, we have our persons. We have name grouping, some values, natural compare. So. We do select on some values. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of like a, a group by though, isn't it? So from persons, order by natural compare, group by name grouping. And that's not failing. Oh, okay. Which one is failing? That's not failing. This one's failing. So this is doing select on a given frequency from numbers, group by ID, having, and so it's chaining having. Okay, so apparently we've written code that works for all of these other tests, but now we have to get into the chain of having. Um, okay, so in our constructor, we'll say uh, this dot having functions is an array and then uh, whenever you say having we're gonna say this dot having functions dot push that function so they're gonna be in the array in the order that they were there were uh, chained in um, and then now this dot having should check if it just has some links so if uh, this dot having function and this dot having oh, functions whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> dot link. So if having functions is a thing and it's an array of them, then we we need to do we need to do something with them. Cool. Um, Six a.m. Yeah. Uh, Merit Chan is in a different part of the world, <laughs> I believe. 
Um, Sharpie 360 is, can you explain converting a given string to a base 64 format? Maybe a high-level summary and a basic example? Um, I will, because it's uh, it's fairly easy if you're in the browser. Um, you can do B to A, I believe. So B to A is a built-in function in the browser where you can pass in um, a string, and that'll give you back a base 64 value. And then if you want to convert from uh, base 64 to the underlying representation, you can do A to B and then pass in that uh, base64 string. And you'll get back the original value. Um, so if you're in the browser, easy enough. But yeah, Andrew Lane just pr uh, provided, um, this is what you would do if you're in Node.js. So uh, buffer from and then to string. Yeah. Uh, it's not built into a project. So in the browser, those functions are just globals. It's not built into into anything really. When you're in Node, you will need to use the uh, the buffer class. Yeah. <laughs> Bad time. <laughs> uh, good morning, Kaizen. Welcome to the stream. Yeah. Rock and roll. Uh, hello, Phil. Um, <laughs> who says it's 11:52 here in Quebec? Is that a.m. or p.m.? Well, I guess you probably use 24-hour time, so it's a.m. Right. Uh, where I am, it is 9.53 p.m., or um, 21, 21.53 is where it's what it is where I am. Um, okay, but where we were was now we need to be able to chain multiple having functions. Um, so we'll do just that. And I'm hoping it's just going to work. So <laughs> having greater than one and having is pair. So really, we just need to do multiple filters. Um, so execute data. Um, so really, we could do a, just a for each in, I think we'll just do a for each and overwrite execute data. So this dot having functions dot for each function. And then we'll do this, um, but we'll just pass in that individual function. Cannot read property length of undefined. Um, I guess I'm not, I don't really know how having is even working. Um, because we have having greater than one. So that says group at one dot length is greater than one. And then is pair group at zero. Okay. So we are doing the group by before we do that, we're doing the having, right? Um, Here's what I want to do. And actually, did we break any previous tests? No, we didn't break any, any previous tests. So actually, I want to store this just in a variable with an execute. <laughs> um, is that dot execute. Um, and this is where uh, yeah, guys, and this is a one Q. It's a one Q. This is the first time we're doing a one Q. Um, now we'll bring up the uh, Wallabies stuff. Run line tests. I guess we can just do a log of intermediate. So, okay, the group by gives us this, huh? So, we say having and we pass in um, greater than one, there, I mean, there is no length property. Because these are all numbers, like their frequency. Huh. Um, and if we do is pair, we say group 
at zero. Maybe we're not doing the group by right. Let's take a quick stretch. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Oh, actually, that was yeah, that was already stored in a variable. So the, the group by ID gives us back this, and and that's correct. We got at least that far, right? Cool. Um. So we know at least that's working. But now this having having business, having greater than one. Okay. Select number, count number from numbers, group by number, <laughs> having count number greater than one, and is pair number. Okay, so instead of doing um, like the for each on the filters like that, I think we should probably do this, so like similar to how we did it with where. So um, we're gonna get each individual row, and then um, we need to say return um, and having and is pair of a number. Um, so that actually would be um, this dot having functions dot um, every. And so every returns true if everything will return true. So that gives us our function. We want to execute that function on the row. But again, we're getting that cannot read property length of undefined. Um, so, I mean, should we s check if that returns an error? And if it does, we don't include it. Select frequency. Oh. So that passes in the group, and then that does the select. But the having needs to occur before the select happens. Oh, I think that's it. So I think having needs to occur, occur before select. Um, where's our select? Yep, <laughs> that did it. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, basically the having was occurring on the group itself, but after the select, the group didn't exist anymore. That's why there wasn't a length property. So if we do having first, then we can do um, the select. Okay, moving right along. So we're, we're down to joins. We'll do joins and then duplication, and we'll be done. We, we'll, we would have done a, uh, a 1Q. <laughs> uh, that's Canada? Oh, cool. PM? Pacific time? I see. Canada's pretty, yeah, there's, Canada is very big. <laughs> um, you do realize your clock says 21, not nine, right? Yeah, I do keep this as 24 hour time. It's now 22. <laughs> but I was looking at my Windows computer, which has uh, like 12 hour time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a one queue. Cool. Um, all right, so now we got to do joins. This will be fun. So uh, we are given an array of teachers and an array of students. And uh, the join is going to attempt to join the students with their given teacher based on their tutor ID. Um, okay, so we query from Oh, and now from includes two values. So right now our from function is just taking in data. Now things get complex. <laughs> uh, let's see how many different froms. Oh, we only have two tests to get passing. Okay, so from, if from takes in two values, then um, we need to, um, We need, I guess, we need to store both because right now the way our, our class is working is we're, we're just seeing if there's an array of data, but now there's two array of data. So 
maybe we call it uh, data and join data. So the second parameter can be join data. Um, so from that, wait, 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 am I too far? No, 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 we're right here. So from teachers and students, select with the student, the join um, passes in, what is this, join bracket one? Student name, teacher work. Oh, I, I guess join passes in an array with the two two data values when it's doing a select now. Huh. Where teacher join. Okay. I, I mean, I, I think... <laughs> I, I think really all we have to do is say... Um, from and then data and then join data uh, and we'll say um, if join data this dot data equals an array with data and join data inside of it and what does this do um, expected an empty array so from those two things, uh, we're calling select and with student. And our select should just pass in um, our data. Cool. So the data is just an array with the two values inside of it. Um, oh, no. It needs to be an array of length one with the data inside of it because then whenever we call select, um, it'll map it and pass that array into the select function, um, which is here. And then join at one is students and join at zero is um, teachers. No. No. No 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 we create a new we create a new array. Here's what we do. Um so this dot data is gonna be um this dot no it's gonna be data dot map. That'll give us the row and the index. And we need to return an array with the row and join data at i, like that. We did it. <laughs> so basically, um, we're, we create an array of arrays where the two values of each of each of each thing that we're joining are together in the array. Cool. So that one passes. Um, are any of our other ones failing? No, all our other ones are still passing. So now we're on to our um, second to last. So say select from numbers one and numbers two. And then we execute. Oh. This is tricky. Um, so we're given two arrays, and it kind of wants us to find every possible combination. So like one and four, one and five, two and four, two and five. And all we're returning is one and four and two and five. So we're returning this and this, but not these two. Okay. Um, cool. And the previous test, I mean, it did have two values in it. Yeah. Don't know. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Um, Kaizen says, so the output will be an array of arrays with two values. 
uh, or the object with the names. Um, the output is um, an array with two objects inside of it for, for this for this one that we just got passing. Um, but now we got to do something tricky. So for some reason, um, it, I guess if the data is of a certain type, we actually need to find all possible like combinations of the two. So one and four, and I think we have, yeah, we have one and four, and then one and five. And two and four and two and five. We can do it. I, I'm just trying to think how we do this generally, like because in the in the previous case, uh, we said from, and we were given teachers, which is an array of length two, and students. And we, when we created the data, we said um, join. I guess we could we could have um, we could have looked at the ID, but we created a new array that has this object and this object, and then this object and this object, and that worked for the simple case. Cool, but now we need to create multiple comparisons. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, Tux is asking, what is the SQL equivalence to this? I don't know if there is a SQL equivalent. So um, I'm currently doing uh, this one Q kata. So like this is as hard as it gets on this website. Um, and essentially they're just having us implement a like a functional style SQL thing. So um, a lot of what we've already implemented are essentially like different ways of of chaining function calls. So we can do things like, uh, query select from numbers and then execute or query from numbers execute query from numbers select then execute um, and then it got a little bit more complex and um, we can start passing in functions to our select so the function returns a property from each thing we essentially have to like map over the data to select it our where clause is a function so it's very very functional and, and ultimately our solution um, is these functions which take in functions and then call those functions on the data. Um, so I, yeah, I don't really know if there's a, um, a, a SQL equivalent to it. Um, cool. Uh, Killardin is saying cross join previously worked by luck because they were in order for the where. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so basically, um, I just need to update my um, my from function. Um, to basically map with all of the data. And it, it can't just be a map because we're creating an array that's like twice as long. Um, really, we need to just have like a nested for loop. So, um, I think because we'll have let's get to it um yeah so we can iterate over this and pair it with e pair one with four and then one with and then iterate over the inner one to create a new array of one of four one of five and then we get to two and iterate over the inner one again so um yeah i think we'll just need to do a nested for loop um and um because what Callard Callardin is saying is we got lucky, which means if we do this, it should still work for the previous test. So uh, let's do a for loop where for, for i is less than uh, data dot length. Um, and then we're gonna get the, um, like the column, and that's gonna be data at i. And then we're gonna do for let i equal, well, let's do uh, j. Well, j is less than join data dot length j plus plus, um, and let's call this join column, and that's going to be join data at i, um, and we'll say um, joined is an array, and then we need to push into joined a new array, 
with column join column. Um, and then we'll say this dot data equals joined data. <clears throat> Let's take a stretch. And yes, terminal, you're right. I have the wrong uh, uh, index on line 38. <clears throat> yeah, so this should be join data at j. Thank you. Um, and then we'll say this dot data equals join data. No, 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 joined. Well, what do we get? We get a passing test. <laughs> um, does the other one still pass? Uh, it does. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So that works. And uh, this is the last one for joins. Um, let's see what we're doing wrong. So from takes in two things. Uh, then we've chained our wares. I think we're already handling chained wares. Or no, no, we're not, are we? Wait, are we? Are we? Nope, we're not. <laughs> we were handling the case where you could pass in an, like multiple functions to where, but now we need to be able to chain where. Hmm. Um, okay. We can do that. We can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, whew, okay, so. Um, uh, d does it do anything different though? So select student name and teacher name from from teachers. So our select, uh, so our, what's our student function? Yeah, so that, that does the select. Um, where, and then it does the teacher join. Wait, sorry, where are we? Here, where's the teacher join? It does the teacher join first, and then after it's done the teacher join, Wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. This one. No, it does teacher join, and then where tutor. Okay. Uh, which in yeah, so it seems odd, but I'm thinking we we might have to handle it differently. Uh oh, chain is and. Oh. <laughs> uh, where and okay, so if if you pass in multiple where's into a single. Good call, and thanks for f pointing that out. So if you pass in multiple functions to where, it's an or. If you pass in, uh, if you chain it, then it becomes an and. Okay, how are we gonna handle that? So right now, um, where functions can take in multiple functions, and it, it does this. Cool. Um, I guess we can say, if this only has a single value, like if you only pass in a single function, or no, if you, um, okay, I think this is what we need to do. So well, the, the second time you call where, we'll check to see if where functions is already defined. And if it is, uh, we need another array of like and where functions. Um, so yeah. If not this dot where functions, set the functions. Else this dot and where functions equals functions. And now that we have and where, uh, we can do that. Um, here, well, now we have multiple arrays of functions. Because the first time it got called, it got put into where functions. And then the second time it got called, it got put into and where functions. So we kind of just need to say like, if and where functions is a thing, oh no, that should be fine. Cause the where will run the filter easy and then we'll just run it again. And that makes it an and, right? <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, I think this is our last test, so we actually don't have to handle um, um, we don't have to handle the complex cases, so that works. 
Uh, now we just have like a duplicate check. I don't know what these last tests are doing, but that that did it. <laughs> uh, okay, duplication exception tests. I don't even know what these are really even doing. Um, check error. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I gotta I gotta dissect that. See what those are actually doing. Yeah. Test. What do you got? <laughs> An H1. Cool. Yeah, the bot, the, the, the Echo bot isn't running anymore. Um, yeah, so Mike Chown is saying, what happens if you chain more than two wares? Um, it overwrites the and. <laughs> I'm only making the test pass. Though, if we plug this into Code Wars and they have more thorough tests, that stuff's going to fail. So, yeah, you're right. You are very right. Um, else, if not, and where's? Else, and where's equals this dot and where's dot concat functions. So if you call it again and again, it's just going to push it into the and where's function, right? <laughs> Um, so that should be good. Now let's figure out what this duplication exception tests are trying to do. Um, oh, terminal asked the same question. Yeah, yeah. Code to the test, no doubt. <laughs> Document dot write test. Cool. Okay. Um, does anyone see what this is asking for? So. Check error takes in a function and a duplicate. Um, so check error takes in this function. It doesn't return anything though. It just calls query. So oh, select dot select. I see. Expected false to equal true. So this calls the function. An error should be thrown. I see. So you shouldn't be allowed to call select twice. Huh. OK, we can handle that. Um, so uh, if this dot select function throw new error. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what, should, what should I say? Uh, can only select once. Query dot select. Call select again. Let's, let's comment these out. We really just want this one to run. Um, expected false to equal true. Expected false to equal true to equal duplicate select. Oh, assert equals. Oh, the message should be duplicate select. I see. Yeah, and the duplicate is there. OK, so um, E is an instance of error. Cool. E dot message expected false to equal true to equal duplicate select. So um, assert equals, I think that's just an issue with how we wrote this up here. Um, expected false to equal true to equal duplicates. <laughs> duplicates select. What? Um, so assert equals is passing in a message and it's checking to see if it's equal to this message. And then what are we doing for expect? Expect false 
Oh, I think it's because that expect is running. What? Yeah, this is running. So when we invoke the function here, uh, that's not throwing an exception. So we call select. Oh, because there there is no function. I see. I see, I see. Um, I guess we can just store like um, called as like an object like this. And um, when you call the function, we'll say this dot, um, we'll do it here. Uh, this dot called at select equals true. And then we'll just say um, if it was already called. That's why. So it wasn't throwing an error. Now it's throwing an error. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, that one should be good because it's just putting it in a different order. Uh, now we need to handle no duplicate from. So uh, right here, <laughs> say uh, this dot called at from equals true. And we'll do the check right at the beginning. Um, if this dot called from, throw an error, duplicate from. Cool. Uh, we need to do the same thing with order by and the same thing with group by. And we can handle that. This dot called at order by equals true. Um, I mean, we could probably extract this out, make it more reusable, but I've been streaming for three hours, so <laughs> I'm going to go soon. We're going to get it. This is going to be it. This is, this is all we got to do. Uh, so we did order by. We also need to do uh, group by. This dot call dot select equals true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right on all of that. But we have we have 100% passing tests. Ta-da! Hooray! Victory! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, edge case time. I'm I'm kind of scared of what's gonna happen when we plug this into Code Wars because I mean I've got I got all the passing tests, but what other tests is Code Wars going to throw at us? The thing is, in a really hard problem like this, I would expect that they give us all the tests up front because I don't like because other than that, you can't see the tests that they're gonna run. So I don't know. We'll see. We're about to plug it in, but I am I'm gonna fix all this. I did bracket notation. I shouldn't be doing bracket notation. Um, and order by. Cool. All right. Let's uh let's ship it. Let's ship it. Um Kalarden is saying should do array of arrays likely as you're limiting yourself to two where's the inner are or and the outer are and allows each where to have multiple and do ors and then have to multiple war uh multiple where's for the and. 
Yeah, it's going to depend on the tests, and um, it, it seems like it's a bit ambiguous, like, how, how you would use this in the real world, because it, it seems like if you chain any, 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 any where that comes next, um, should be an and, but I guess technically, let's take a quick stretch. I guess technically you could have like a and with a nested or. So you could have and with like multiple functions passed in here where it does an or. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> nah, nah, bruh. <laughs> um, Twitch actually looks nicer live? Really? Yeah. I, I think I'll, I'll switch to Twitch eventually, um, but yeah, there are 32 people watching on YouTube, so I still have an audience on YouTube. Like, I can't, I can't stop streaming on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're, this is the moment of truth. Uh, nope, bet not. <laughs> uh, we're going to see. Will, will Code Wars run more and more tests? Uh, how long did this 1Q take? Um, I, I would say, like, roughly two and a half hours. Like, we pretty much started 30 minutes in. Uh, how long we've been up? Uh, three hours, so it took me about two and a half hours, <laughs> and that's with interacting with the chat and also getting help from the chat. So, uh, Merchan is asking, what's the difference between accessing by brackets and accessing by dot? Um, they're uh, fundamental. Like, <laughs> I'm getting tired, but there, ultimately there is no difference. Like, it's it's just property accessing or or we're setting a, a property. But um, if the property name is something that doesn't have spaces or special characters, it's usually good practice to just do dot notation instead of bracket notation. Um, I did bracket notation because I'm tired. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to need a drum roll for this one. <clears throat> um, and we don't do the module exports on here. We just say that. Uh, drum roll. <laughs> so, um, that ran the sample tests. When we do the attempt, this could run more tests. So this is the, this is the true test. Here we go. Submit final. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, um, like everyone that has mentioned it, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. Like there are all kinds of weird edge cases in here. Like what do we do if they, ch if they chain a third where, what does that mean for the SQL query? Like what if they chain multiple where's where each they pass multiple functions in? Um, yeah, like this, this is not at all a fully fledged, uh, test suite. But we got the basic test passing, and I think that's good. <laughs> uh, the moment of truth. Um, yeah. Yeah, we did it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hooray. Clap. OMG. Ta-da. <laughs> F. <laughs> so it was all the tests. Yeah, that's good to know. Uh, that's good to know. Congratulations. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, you're one of the 238 people on Earth who solved that. Really? Look at that. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, their code doesn't look too much more. I mean, like, what the heck is this doing? But cool. Cool. That's exciting. We, we did a 1Q. <laughs> yes. Now you got to look at the people who did it in crazy clever ways. That's true. We should spend like a moment appreciating the the work of our past past people. That's a lot of functions. Um execute this dot group cross uh, that I mean that's that's too complicated. 
Um, I see. And then where gets like functions pushed into it. I don't know. I'm too tired to look at these solutions, but we did it. We did a one Q. I'm going to change the title of this video. Watch CJ solve a one Q in under three hours. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, everyone. Final Fantasy. Yes. Let's hear it again. <laughs> Rad. Uh, good morning, Menace Paul. Um, yeah. What's the next one Q? I don't know. And actually, um, how many of them are are there even? So, like, if we search for uh, JavaScript uh, 1Q um, with no other filtering, there are only 20 of them. So, um, I think maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll do a 1Q every two months. <laughs> this is the first. Uh, Don went, ate a sandwich, and came back. Good job. Thank you, Adam. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, Surprisingly, all of the tests that we were we were writing uh, or getting our, our code to run against were the only tests that code, uh, or at least that I know of, that um, Code Wars ran against them. So that was good. GG. Now I can sleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks, Harsh. Cool. You too. You too, Rabbit Works. Did my Code War score jump? I feel like it didn't. Uh, maybe we can rewind the stream and see what my score was at the beginning. Let's do that. Because um, now it's 15.13. Let's see. Uh, 1377 is what it was before. What's 1377 minus 1513? 136 with one problem. Wow. it's pretty good. <laughs> Much love. Thanks. Rabbit works out. See you later, man. Have a good night. Um, what's the Fortnite thing? What do they call it? Victory Royale. Oh, is that, is that what it's called? I don't know. We won. We won though. Every I can't do a one Q every week. It's very tiring. <laughs> uh, Sixty hours to solve them all. Yeah. Cool. All right. See you later, Phil Carbon. Thanks for tuning in. Or for Phil Carbo. All right. I guess there were ling lingering questions. Uh, Bob asked about async and promises. I think I'm done though. Um, and in terms of um, how to integrate an editor, you can look at things like Ace Editor. Uh, harsh. So Ace Editor is a web-based um, code editor. It's open source. Um, and then also, if you look at, um, I think it's, is it JSBin? Yeah, I think JSBin is open source. JSBin GitHub. Yeah, collaborative JavaScript debugging. Um, new version is an active development but um harsh you could probably start here so th th this is an open source project uh, jsbin and you could either use it or uh, modify it to your liking to get this um playground of, of of javascript yeah gg thanks Bart. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got the kata done. Uh, Miss Mosley, look, I'll, I'll show you the the, pa the passing tests locally. Um, episode thirty-two. Uh, NPX Mocha. Seven passing tests. I mean, each of these tests had multiple. In I think this is in in total like forty different tests. But yeah, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, see you later, terminal. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, if you followed on Twitch during the stream, uh, be sure to watch the credits afterwards. Your name will pop up. Um, I, I believe I said everyone's name, but if I didn't, I apologize. You will see your name and it will be forever on YouTube. Um, so <laughs> thanks. Thanks everyone for tuning in. This was super fun. Um, and you were, you witnessed history. This is the first one Q that CJ has solved live, live streaming. It was cool. It was super fun to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not going to stream tomorrow. I might stream morning tea on Friday, but that's still up in the air. Definitely some streams this weekend. So just watch the channel. Um,
join the Discord for notifications or join Twitter. Thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, the first 1Q on YouTube. Are there other people solving katas on YouTube? I thought I was the only one. <laughs> GG. Thanks, Sean. All right. Hi. Hi and bye, Sean. <laughs> Good night. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone, again. This was super fun. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Thank you.